Hi, I'm Alan Murray, CEO of Fortune Media. AI, and specifically generative AI, has become the talk of business in the last six months, uh, and many say it holds the potential to transform most industries. I'm here with a man who knows the answer. It's Tom Siebel. He is a Silicon Valley legend and also chairman and CEO of C3 AI. Tom, thanks for talking to us. Hello, Alan. Nice to see you. We've seen amazing things from AI in the last few months, but we've also seen some disappointments. From your view, is this hype or is it real? Is AI really going to transform business? Well, Alan, uh, as you know, we began work 14 years ago uh, uh, on this project, uh, building a platform that would allow a software platform that would allow organizations to take advantage of elastic cloud computing big data to the internet of things and predictive analytics to deploy enterprise AI applications uh, to allow businesses uh, to produce products at lower cost, provide them uh, to more satisfied customers, to operate with lower environmental impact, and allow governments to provide better services. So we believed that this enterprise AI market was going to be quite real. And uh, now, uh, 14 years later, it appears that the rest of the world has caught up with us. And uh, so it now is, I think, the number one, two, and three topic uh, on the uh, desk of every CEO and every board. And uh, companies are determined to figure out how is the how are these technologies threatening? How they, can they take advantage of them? And how can they use them competitively? So I think the age of enterprise AI has come and it is fully raging at this point. I think until a few months ago, I thought the power of AI was to take vast amounts of data, you know, run it through smart algorithms and, and give you some intelligence. But now we have AI actually creating documents, images, and so on. Uh, what's going on there? Well, generative AI is a very, there's no question, this is a very significant breakthrough. So this is on the order of the internet, on the order of the Mosaic browser, on the order of the smartphone. This is a genuine big deal. And we will see, you know, billions of dollars per year being invested in these large language models and associated, you know, uh, pre-trained generated transformers by Google, Microsoft, the Academy, uh, MIT, uh, and other organizations uh, and, and governments in the years to come. What was behind the development of generative AI and how do you think that's going to be used by your customers? Our data science team has been working with generative AI since 2020 and uh, to, to understand what it is and where it's going, and particularly these understanding the power of these language large language models, and they are powerful. And we're using it in a very, uh, say, a non-obvious fashion, an obvious fashion that everybody's familiar, familiar with is chat, which is pretty interesting. And before it's over, it's going to get very powerful um, and in some positive ways and some negative ways. But our interest was really spurred by customer need. You know, I got an email from one of our customers at the Department of Defense to Tom, I want to be the Google for DOD. A user asks a question and gets an answer. How do I make that happen? And, you know, pretty darn interesting question. And before ChatGPT became public. This, oh, yeah, ChatGPT. This is before ChatGPT. So I want to be the Google for DOD. And we thought about this and said, well, what does he mean? And, you know, I've been involved in enterprise application software, as you know, for decades. And, um, and you know, I have to say, whether we look at, when we look at enterprise application software, whether these are SCADA systems or command and control systems, or you know, next to me I have a Bloomberg term, terminal. I mean, these things are largely unusable, right? I mean, even by experts, they're largely unusable. And you know, there's a Bloomberg terminal here, and I mean, the power user might be able to use five percent of the capability of this thing. Um, and so. You know, we're, we have a situation where the person who's the vice chair of the joint the chair of the joint chiefs of staff, he might want to ask a question like, how am I doing against my uh, recruiting goals, diversity goals in the Marines? Or how am I doing against my DEA goals or DEI goals? Or how am I doing? What is my satellite coverage in Indo-PACOM? Or what are my readiness levels for uh, F-35s in, in Central Europe? 
And today, that then goes to two two stars. It goes to four colonels. It goes to 16 CIOs. And four weeks later, they come back with two PowerPoints. Give them the answer. So when you think about it, we have a human computer interface that billions of people know how to use. It's Google search. And so we thought about that. I mean, everybody knows how to use it. The Secretary of Defense knows how to use it. The private on the flight line in, at Wright-Patterson knows how to use it. The, the, the chairman of Coca-Cola knows how to use it. The person who buys Coke in the grocery store knows how to use it. Everybody knows how to use it. Why don't we use that? So we basically took the Google search metaphor, combined that with NLP, NLP, which you know anticipates the question you're answering, Combine that with reinforcement learning. This is where the machine learning model gets trained by the human as we go. And then combine that with generative AI to fundamentally change the nature of the human computer interface model for these um, rather complex enterprise applications, be the ERP or SCADA systems, command and control systems, or logistic systems for you know, whether we're dealing with Army or the private enterprise. And so what we have done, we have changed the user interface from these complex menu hierarchies and command infrastructures to simply the Google search. You type in the question, what, are, what, is my, you know, what is my delivery time schedule for the, how late am I on deliveries for uh, 737 MAX 8? Dave, uh, 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 Dave Calhoun could ask at Boeing. Or, or how am I doing... You know, what are my readiness levels in the F-35 Joint Strike Fighters in Poland, which the, the Secretary of Defense might want to know. And it just gives him the answer. Is so it, we, we, have, we have used the large language model of, to capture all the data in the enterprise, be it Coke, uh, uh, Shell, or the Department of the Air Force. And we, we, we have crawled all of that data. We have indexed all of those data and we can infer the correct answer. But importantly, the data that we're providing are not just the data that are within C3, we're looking at all the data that they have within the enterprise. Now we don't have the hallucination problem that you run into with ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4 because they're dealing with these massive data sets from, you know, they're, they're, they're crawling the entire internet. When we deal with constrained data sets, we don't have the hallucination problem and we're made, whether it's the private on the flight line, the person working on the production line at, at Georgia Pacific, or the consumer of, or, or a patient uh, inquiring about healthcare, it gives the right person the right answer, depending on who they are and what access privileges they have with the user face interface that everybody knows how to use. Tom, you work with a lot of different industries. Which industries do you think are going to be most impacted by this new technology? Well, with enterprise AI, we're able to make enterprise applications predictive. Okay. So rather than tell us what our inventory levels were, we can tell managers what the inventory levels need to be to meet the demand function. Rather than tell our bank what fraud on money laundering cases took place in the last six months, we can identify anti-money laundering or financial fraud in real time and stop it rather than report what our customer churn was at Verizon or at Citicorp to the board once a quarter. So I would argue that there is no board of directors that is going to tolerate a presentation from, from a CEO in three to five years who reports where the supply chain broke down, what customers uh, left us. Uh, 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 um, you know, where are, um, uh, uh, you know, what equipment broke? I mean, when they simply will not tolerate the, those presentations, when in fact we have the ability to predict those things and prevent them. There is no industry, telecom, chemicals, pharmaceutical, uh, uh, oil and gas, travel transportation, financial services, uh, government services, Department of Justice, Treasury, so, uh, Social Security. There's nobody who will not take advantage of this technology. Tell me how C3 AI is, is working to maximize the positive impacts of this technology, which are obviously huge, and minimize the negative impacts, which are also obviously huge. Well, ultimately, it boils down to a business judgment and business ethics issue, Alan. I don't think this can be regulated, and it certainly can't be de delegated to a, to a department of, that you have of ethicists that are two floors down. 
Okay. It both, you know, ultimately is the management team's decision to do the right thing. Okay. And we get asked to do, um, applications that are, in my opinion, are unethical all the time. And we just won't do that. Okay. So that, 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 that's what it boils down to. It boils down to people doing the right thing. So Tom, look ahead, look ahead a decade, uh, cast yourself forward a decade from now with this transformational technologies being put into place. How is the world of business going to be different? Give us a picture of what it's going to look like. We will use these technologies to augment humans uh, and make humans much more effective to make better decisions, uh, deliver better products into the hands of more satisfied customers. Now, these technologies will also be misused. Okay. We get uh, in, in many, many nefarious ways that are candidly, you know, uh, unimaginable. Okay. Uh, unimaginable and make the, uh, George Orwell look like Dr. Seuss. Okay. In terms of, I mean, th this is how it make the Orwellian future look like nothing so it's very scary uh it needs to be talked about it needs to be discussed i don't think i'm not certain that regulating is the right thing to do there's this discussion to to have a you know put in a faa you know federal algorithm association that uh, administration that is going to i guess you know approve any algorithm before it gets published so um i'm not sure what the answer is but it needs to be on the top of the agenda. It needs to be discussed. And um, and um, if we don't discuss it and we don't talk about it, we're going to be very, very sorry. Tom, fascinating conversation thank and gripping conversation. Uh, we'll be counting on C3AI to help guide us uh, through the, the future. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you, Alan.